Hello everyone, this is No Number Man and welcome to this video on 3D projection matrices or perspective projection matrices. So in the last video we checked out orthographic projection matrices or 2D projection matrices. If you haven't seen that video then I would definitely recommend watching that first because I will be using information from that video. So I'll have a card at the top of the screen somewhere right now. And with that being said, let's just get into it. So I still have this paint open right now, and I'm just going to destroy a couple of things. Let's now say that we want a 3D scene. Well, what really makes a scene 3D? Well, it is the sense of perspective. And what is the sense of perspective? Well, that is basically described in one thing, really. And that is, if something is further away from the screen, it appears to be smaller. That is how we see things, right? A car that's standing far away appears smaller than a car that is close by. That is what we want to achieve. So let's just look at a small little screen here. There we go. And let's say that we have an eye behind it. And then, of course, the eye has a viewing angle like this. And it looks out into the scene. Now, what we then want to do is let's say we have a triangle over here. Then whenever we have a vertex, we want to draw a line from that vertex to the eye. And then wherever it crosses the screen, that is where our vertex is going to be rendered. So let's now do that for the other vertices and project these here and there. And then you'll see that indeed now one is there, one is there. Look at this. This triangle is a lot smaller than the original triangle. And of course, the further away this is, the smaller this is going to get. And the closer this is, I think that is easier to see, then it would definitely be bigger here on the screen as well. Yes, so that is how perspective matrices work. Now, let's get into this. Because of course, our projection matrix in our shader, nothing changes. This remains exactly the same. The only thing that really changes is in here, our projection matrix. Only this thing right here, instead of creating an orthographic matrix, we can create a perspective field of view matrix. There we go. So that near that far should be the same, but then we have a field of view and an aspect ratio. Okay, so what does this do exactly? Well, the field of view sort of determines how far we are away from the screen. Well, it sort of conflicts with depth near, but depth near is really more like a clip plane that just occludes things that are too close. Field of view is maybe more in the classical sense what determines, well, your field of view, how wide you can see. So let's make another screen. There we go. If our eye is very far away, then of course we are going to have a very small angle between the topmost ray of light that we can see and the bottommost ray of light that we can see. So anything in the scene here, because this of course extends through the scene, anything that is outside of these lines, like a sphere here, cannot be seen by you because any light or any vertices that would be projected to your eye would pass over the screen so it just wouldn't get projected on it and it just won't get rendered or well it will get projected on it actually but it will get projected outside of your vision here so it will just not show up on your screen but now let's say that we move our eye closer well if we do that then all of a sudden this angle is a lot larger so now the angle that extends into the scene will also be larger and something that is drawn here will be shown course let's put the eye back here and then overlap them check that out so an eye that is further away cannot see the sphere while an eye that is closer will see the sphere now that's the idea of fields of view so let's check this out normally i believe that our field of view is approximately like 60 degrees or pi over 3 of course it is in radiance it says that so it should be pi over 3 if you use a bigger field of view you are effectively putting your eye closer and you are going to see more stuff. The downside of that is that it can get really confusing and weird looking if your field of view is too large. Of course, we are human, so we are used to approximately a 60 degree field of view. So if, if you put your hands out and you move them apart from each other 
and you just keep track of them with your eyes or you try to keep track of them with your eyes without actually moving your head then there is a point where you can just about see the, your hands at the edge of your field of vision and if you move them a little bit further apart they they are just gone now if you check out that angle for me i think that's about 120 degrees but of course the outside of your eyes well they're a bit fuzzy you don't really see too well through them so that can still look a bit weird 120 degrees so what i like to do is 60 degrees and that is approximately where your normal field of vision is at its sharpest so i i feel like and of course this is personal experience that this is a good way to do it so let's do math.pi divided by 3.0 f i think because pi is a float and this thing or is a double and this thing needs a float okay and then the aspect ratio of course is just width divided by height so in our case we could even just do window.size.x divided by window.size.y these are integers, I believe. Yes, so you got an integer division here. So just cast one to a float or both to a float, really. And then your division will be fine. That is just your screen aspect ratio. Well, and that is really just it. Now, one thing that you might notice is that with the orthographic projection, you need to specify the borders of your screen. Like it's a thousand wide, a thousand high. You don't have to do that here because this is basically determined just by your field of view. So again, if we go to this cone, well, it's really just the distance between your eye, the object, and then the angle that determines whether you can see it or not. If you're very far away in depth, you can also be very far away in width and height. Well, if you are very close in depth, you can only have a small variation in width and height before you land outside of the field of vision and you cannot be seen anymore. In our case, the 250 by 250 may work. And minus five, minus five, minus five may also work. Let's check that out. Let's just see what we get, right? What do we see? Uh, okay, so you can see that we are looking at our triangle because the color is changing, but we are definitely way too close because everything is blue. So we're not even seeing different corners of the triangle. We're just, well, right in the middle, it would seem. Okay, so let's put this further away. Let's do minus 50, minus 50, minus 50. Let's check it out then. Okay, now we can already see two colors. So that's better. Not quite what we want. 150, 150, 150. Check that out again. Yeah, now we can see the edges, but we need to be a little bit farther away still. Minus 250. Still a little farther away. Wow, this thing is really, really large. Okay, let's try that again. 350. Still not. Wow, wow, wow. Well, in any case, we have plenty of distance to go still. Yes, there we go. So if we put it 450 away from the screen, we can see it in full. Perfect. Now to prove to you that this is not just some strange uh, orthographic projection, I'm going to change the depth here. Now, of course, you could already see that actually, because of course we were very much zoomed into the thing when it was close to the screen. But just to uh, make it very clear, what we can do here is we can say, well, Let's multiply this by math dot sign of what that we have here, counter divided by 100f. And this, of course, has to be a float. Now, sign will range between minus 1 and plus 1, and we only want it to go between 0 and plus 2. So we'll just add 1 to the sign, and now the range is correct. We can do this for every z value, of course. And now we should really see it rocking back and forth, the triangle that is. Okay, let's check that out. There we go. It goes away from the screen and then it comes right back. There we go. And then it goes away and then it comes right back to the screen. Now the problem here is, now that I notice, this of course will go to zero. So then the distance to the screen will go to zero and it will clip there for a second with our depth near. So what I will do is I will add two and then it will range between one and two. No, one and four. But then of course it will clip with the back. Yes, that <laughs> now it will clip with the depth far. So I'll just make that far 2000, then it won't clip. There we go. 
and now everything is perfect. So you do have to tune this, as you can see, to exactly what you want to show on screen. Of course, I could have made the object smaller, and then I could have made the distance to the screen smaller, and that would have worked as well. It's just whatever you prefer, really. And with that, I think that this is very much working. We can now render 3D scenes in our game. Nice. Next time, we will actually make use of that. We will make a cube and we will render that in our scene. And then we will officially have a 3D object. And that will be very, very cool. So stick around for that. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out so, so much. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.